Hi guys, welcome to the Seven Money Show with me, your host Sean. If you find any of today's entertainment helpful, don't forget to smash the lovely like button. Helps with the YouTube algorithm and getting the video out to more people. We're discussing tankers, specifically NAT, and we're going to go into are they overpriced, undervalued, or are they? Is the price manipulated by Robin Hood investors? Now, we start with the fact that, and don't worry, I'm not going to go only on one side, I'm going to go on the other side as well. Uh, we start with how if you speak to the number one shipping analyst, he gives the real value of a dollar. But, you know, these analysts, they can be wrong. I don't always agree with them. We can go with the fact that it had a pump and dump before where it hit $8. And usually, once a company like this has a run up, it doesn't do it again, not to that level. You do get some that do, but it's rare. <coughs> you get the fact that it has the oldest fleet of all the tanker companies, and usually a tanker would be okay for 15 years. After 20 years, they would start to rust, and then it'd just be junk. It's the reason why they have to pay for recertification after longer than 25 years. Now, the other thing is that they have, they're all Series Maxes. Whereas a lot of the competitors are VLCCs. And lately we've seen Series Max being between 8 and 10,000 dollars whereas that is eight thousand is break even ten thousand is just above we have uh, fact that to counter that we have the fact that the CEO and his son has been buying in there into it. However, four hundred thousand would be a lot to us, but to them it's not. If anything, it could be seen as a tax write-off. Now we also have the fact that that they employed a lot of their tankers were on uh, long-term contracts when they're not. From our research, they're all subject to spot rates. Now, I said when I first researched these, before the Contango, that they only had 23 Suez Maxes, and DHT had 27 Suez Max, and 23 of those weren't on long term contracts and a majority of DHT's fleet was VLCC's which is why I preferred them I got slated for that and that's fine that's it down to you other thing is they're going to have to go they're going further abroad to try and get more competitive race such as China. Nothing wrong with that. China is buying up more and more oil at the moment. So that's smart if you're in their position. But you don't want to have to be put in that position. The last thing is when you have a year like this where you're making a massive amount of money. They have so much debt. 
and they're paying all the money out in dividends. So you have the dividend chasers jumping in for the dividends and then jumping out again. Whereas they should be paying down some of that debt. And the thing with that is whereas TK tankers who are in a worse position than them cut their dividend and paid off their their debts and they are now they've now leveraged the balance sheet so that puts them in a much better position now if we look at the other side we look at the fact that people have faith in them they're piling into them and it doesn't matter if you've got the best company in the world the best run company in the world if people aren't buying their shares the shares won't rise and if the shares are rising in one company then other people will be attracted to it because it's one that rises I've had companies before that had all the right things behind it but no one knew of it and no one uh, went into it but it had all the right things behind it and for some reason it just went along like a straight line and what happens when a share goes or a company goes along a straight line it ends up floundering because inflation kills it now we have uh, another thing to look at sorry about that and before we do I'd like to ask you to hit that lovely like button helps with the YouTube algorithm and getting the video out to more people if you haven't subscribed please hit the subscribe button You'll become a part of the Savvy Money Show family we're a close community where I love every one of my subscribers you, we give each other tips and updates on companies before I can get a video out and you can ask me to look into any company you want I don't charge a discord fee or a patreon and if you're looking for a free trading platform which to trade your stocks and shares don't forget to check out the links in the description below you can get a free share worth up to 200 pounds for signing up and depositing a small amount free trade only requires a two pounds to qualify and they're currently running a promotion where you'll get entered into a prize draw for a free tesla share if you get a tesla share please let me know i will be so cut out for you and uh the way i see it is the free share will be worth more than the two pound you put in and the uh even if they didn't give you the free share which they will you you would uh, get be paying for an entry into a prize draw for a free tesla share so why wouldn't you do it anyway on to the next bit and we're looking at oh that's the wrong bit sorry so unprofessional yeah yeah no i've moved my head out of the way always in the way i am now we see here the different tankers what they have their performance of the quarter and robin hood investor buys and we we can see how many more shares of nat than they have of any other company number two is frontline and number three is DHT. Now, if you remember during the Katango, I said DHT was the best, then Frontline, then Euronav. 
I since come out when I found out Frontline were due to massively dilute shareholding with a massive amount of shares getting greedy and so for instance the company has 2 million shares they were pl um, planning to put 1 million shares more shares on market imagine that that's what Frontline were about to do now <clears throat> so once I broke even come out of front line which meant I made a small profit about 27 30 pounds because uh, of the dividend I received and we uh, can work out what that is by market cap so obviously you can see that because Frontline has more shares on the market now since the dilution, the market cap of NAT is a lot more and the market cap of DHT, despite having less shares owned by Robinhood. Actually, I'm saying less shares. This is amount of people on Robinhood, not the shares. We can't get the amount of shares that they actually purchased. I'm sorry about that. For the uh, but because the amount of shares frontline through on the market, it means that the market cap they own is less. So NAT they can can only manipulate it a small bit they can only give it like a little nudge they can't double it in value because it's not even one percent yeah they can they can't even knock it up a cent but they can make the charts seem like there's a tiny movement however I know people who are seen on YouTube who have said they're coming out of it because of Robin Hood in my opinion top two now are DHT and Euronav Euronav have a great management team behind them after all they sold a used tanker for more than it would cost for a new tanker during this DHT they just have a great team behind them great fleet who can capitalize on this and I think DHT and the Neuro never were undervalued Scorpio I think they're well undervalued the problem with Scorpio is that the spot rates at the moment make it too hard to pick them up anyway hope this video has been of some use to you and hope you leave a like for me don't forget to check out the links in the description below and i'll see you in the next video goodbye